Do you have an imagination? Oh, oh, yes, I can answer that. Yes. Good. Truth is very seldom understood by any but imaginative persons, and I want to be quite truthful. I'm a bachelor, but not, I might add, a lonely one. I spend a great deal of time abroad, and as for my London life, well, <laughs> It amuses me, but it's not the sort of amusement that one could suitably share with children. In brief, Miss Giddens, I'm a very selfish fellow. I'm the last man alive to be saddled so suddenly and so awkwardly with two orphaned infants. It's most unfortunate, for I have no room for them, neither mentally nor emotionally. Does that seem quite heartless? Honest, but not heartless. Then the children do not live with you? No, they are at my country estate in Bly. A rather large, rather lonely place. Still, I'm sure you'll agree with me, the country seems the proper thing for children. Oh, I see from your letter that you are yourself the daughter of a country parson, and... Um... Oh, yes, here it is. More than anything, I love children. Yes. How remarkable. For several years now, little Miles and Flora, charming names, don't you think? have had only me. Well, 
poor brats. They need more than a distant uncle. Well, of course, they need more than a governess. They need affection and love and someone to whom they can belong and who will belong to them. You, Miss Giddens, I feel that you are that person. Sir, you... You do realize that this would be my first position. Well, what does that signify? If I trust you, if you trust me... You see, Miss Giddens, the person whom I engage must solemnly promise to accept full and complete responsibility. She must never trouble me. Never, never. Neither complain, nor appeal, nor write. Simply take the whole thing over and leave me alone. What do you say, Miss Giddens? The children, uh, have they had a governess before? Unfortunately. Not that there was anything wrong with Miss Jessel. She was an excellent governess and a most respectable woman. The children quite liked her, especially little Flora. Oh, which reminds me, be careful not to broach that subject to Flora. She was so fond of Miss Jessel, and it did come as an appalling shock. I'm not certain that I understand you, sir. And she died. Well, it's just when I thought I'd got the whole situation settled and everything running smoothly, a confounded woman died. It was all very odd. I was in Calcutta when it happened and have only now been able to seek a replacement. Meantime, my nephew had to be sent off to school and the little girl, Flora, is being chaperoned by my housekeeper, Mrs. Gross. Help me, Miss Giddens, for truly I am helpless. Give me your hand. Give me your promise. Well, sir, if you are really sure. Quite sure and very grateful. Only remember, you're in supreme authority. Whatever happens, you must handle it alone. Yes, I'll try. I promise you that and I'll do everything I can to keep the children happy. Mind, I think I'd like to walk from here. As you wish, Miss. Walk. Didn't you hear? Someone is calling your name. 
No, I don't think so. I didn't kill anyone. Isn't your name Flora? I'm Miss Giddens. Yes, I know. You're my new governess. I've been watching the road, waiting for you. Are you afraid of reptiles? Oh, that rather depends. Why? Because I've got one in my pocket and oh. he's very eager to meet you. Well, in that case, by all means. His oh. name is Rupert. Oh, a tortoise. We love each other. Yes, I can see that you're very close. Very. There, now you've met Miss Giddens. But Rupert isn't the only one. I mean, ever since my uncle wrote, we've all been waiting and waiting for you to come. Oh, we have been excited. So have I. I've been very excited indeed. Not as excited as we have, and not as excited as Mrs. Gross. She's cleaned and cleaned and had all the windows washed. Just imagine 134 windows. Oh, we will have fun together, won't we? Yes, we will, dear. Oh, Mrs. Crow, she's here, she's here. And she isn't afraid of reptiles. Oh, and that's more than can be said of me, isn't it? <laughs> I walked from the gate. I, I wanted to see it all. <laughs> I'm glad to see you, Miss Giddens. Really, I'm glad. Oh, do please, come in. Oh, thank you, you're very kind. I expect you'd like a cup of tea. Thank you. Well, but not you, Miss Flora. Now, you know you're not allowed in the house with that toad or turtle or whatever it is. Well, go on, run along, off you go. All right. I had no idea. I never imagined. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's all right, Miss. It's always happening. I never imagined it would be so beautiful. Well, we do our best, <laughs> though half the rooms are empty now, locked and empty. All the same, it's too big, a job to keep clean. But what I always say is it's a heaven for children. Oh, yes, a heaven. And what an enchanting child she is. <laughs> There's not another like her. <laughs> though, mind you, she has her ways. You have your work cut out. I don't doubt. But she seems, well, she certainly looks angelic. Well, she is too, but... She does like to wander, to go off by herself. We're always hunting her. Oh, yes. I heard you. Just now, as I was coming through the garden, I heard you call her name. Oh, not me, miss. Perhaps it was Anna or Cook. Well, someone. Sit down, miss, and have your tea. Mm, it'll be dark in here soon. I'll get Anna to bring some lamps. Miss Giddens? Has she gone? Yes, for the moment. You don't mind Rupert sharing a bit of your cake now? You do watch you? out. He'll grow too fat to fit your pocket. I have a pony too. Ooh. He isn't really mine. He belongs to Miles. Miles is my brother, you know. He's away at school. You must miss him very much. Well, he'll be coming home soon. Not, I should think, until the holidays. Time you went upstairs and got ready for your bath, Miss Flora. Promise now. You won't go away. I expect to be here for a very long time. And to think what qualms I had. I was so afraid. Afraid, Miss? I couldn't make up my mind. Should I accept this post or shouldn't I? Well, miss, I'm sure I'm very glad you did. Well, after all, I didn't have much choice. Their uncle is most persuasive. <laughs> oh, and don't I know it. Many's the time he's worked his magic on me. Even when he was a boy, he could twist you around his finger, and the children are the same way. He doesn't come down here very often. Oh, well, he likes the town life. He always was a very popular gentleman, and what's the good of being popular down here with only the children and the pigeons and me? Mrs. Gross? Yes, miss? What was she like? Who, miss? The other governess, the one who died. Oh, Miss Jessel? Oh, she was a young woman. Some thought her pretty, and I, well, I suppose she was, but... Not as pretty as you, miss. Not by half. 
He seems to prefer them, young and pretty. Oh, dear, he had the devil's own eye. I mean, that's his way, the master's. But of whom did you speak first? Why, the master, of course. There's nobody else, miss. Nobody at all. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear, you <laughs> And is the other one just as remarkable? I mean, is he, too, as enchanting? Oh, well, if you like this one, miss, you'll be quite carried away by Master Miles. <laughs> oh, I seem to be carried away quite easily. That's what happened to me in London. <laughs> Miles is coming! Miles is coming! Stuff and nonsense, miss. You know very well Miles is at school. Now, hold still! <laughs> <laughs> I've got a little bed in your room. It's got curtains. How nice. Yes. Mrs. Gross wanted to give you a big room, but I said she'll only be there when she's asleep, and big rooms get bigger at night. Do you know that? Do they? Mrs. Gross doesn't know. She shuts her eyes in the dark. <laughs> I think that's silly. I always look in the dark. Do you? And what do you see? There are a lot of empty rooms. I said to Mrs. Gross, I wish there was some way of sleeping in several rooms at once. Mrs. Gross was quite startled by the thought. I don't wonder. Stuff and nonsense, she said. Stuff and nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. Why can't Rupert sleep with me? Because you might roll over and crush him. Crush a tortoise? Now finish your prayers, dear. If I should wake before... I... If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. Amen. Miss Giddens, mm -hmm. where would the Lord take my soul to? To heaven. Are you certain? Yes, of course, because you're a very, very good girl. But I might not be. And if I weren't, wouldn't the Lord just leave me here to walk around? Isn't that what happens to some people? Who's that? I'm sure something's been hurt. An animal. We must pretend we didn't hear it. That's what Mrs. Gross always says. Pretend? Then we won't imagine things. Well, sometimes one can't help imagining things. For you, Miss. Oh, thank you. Oh, please, can I help you read them? Yes, if you like. Which first? Now, how can I tell? Then I shall choose. Oh, thank you. Here. Now, this one's from my sister. Oh, 
look, dear, here's a picture of me and my family together. Am I in it? How could you be? It's of my family. Oh. Now this one. It's from London. Is it from my uncle? Yes, I think it is. You do look pleased. Is he coming to see us? No, dear. He's sent me a letter from Miles School. you say last night that Miles was coming home? Oh, look! It's a lovely spider, and it's eating a butterfly. Mrs. Gross, here's a letter their uncle has forwarded without opening. It's from Miles' school. He just wrote on the envelope, I'm off to Italy for the summer. This is from Miles Headmaster. Deal with it without bothering me. Oh, that's just his way, miss. But how am I to deal with it? Miles has been dismissed from school. Dismissed? Sent home. Expelled. But what has he done? What do the gentlemen say? Oh, they go into no detail. They simply say... Here, read it. Read it for yourself. It's no good, miss. I, I never learned. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize. They say that it is impossible to keep him. Why? That he is an injury to the others. Master Miles? Him an injury? Oh, stuff and nonsense. You might as well think ill of Miss Flora, bless her. You've never known him to be bad? Oh, I wouldn't say that. You mean you like a boy with spirit? Well, so do I, but not to the degree to contaminate. To what? To corrupt. Master Miles. Oh, miss, are you afraid he'll corrupt you? <laughs> You're Miss Giddens, aren't you? Yes. How do you do? Oh, thank you, Miles. She's our new governess now, and she's awfully nice. I hope Miles will agree. Come. On. <laughs> Nothing's changed. Oh, I've been longing for these holidays. Holidays. Longing to see Bly and Mrs. Gross and Flora. And you. Flora wrote and told me you were coming. Did you have a good term at school? Look, Mark, there's the lake. Oh, it is nice to be back. I hope you won't be lonely. With just Flora and Mrs. Gross and me. Were you happy at school? May I tell you something? Yes, Miles, of course. I think you're far too pretty to be a governess. And I think you're far too young to be such a deceitful flatterer. <laughs> <laughs> Dearest Mrs. Gross, it is nice to be home. Oh, stop, stop. He'll have me out of bed. Come along. It's all just the same. Somehow, I don't know. I was afraid it might be different. Oh, nothing ever changes here, Master Miles. You look a bit thin, though. We'll have to fatten you up. Oh, Miles, you haven't seen the pony. May we? Yes, of course. Come on. <laughs> well, Miss... Oh, it's just as you said. Charm seems to run in the family. And that cruel letter. 
It must be a misunderstanding, a mistake. Oh, yes, a mistake. So, uh, what will you say to Master Miles? I shall have it out with him later on. That can't be avoided, but not now. I'm not going to spoil his homecoming just because of some silly old school teacher. Oh, yes, Miss... Oh, I'm so thankful we're not to have trouble. Dear Mrs. Gross, what a comfort you are. Why don't you come in, Miss Gibbons? How did you know I was there? This is a very old house, Things Creek. And anyway, I saw the light from your candle under the door. You should be asleep. I'm much too excited. Excited? By being home, by seeing Flora. And meeting you. Besides, I like to lie awake. That's a very bad habit, Miles. Is it? Yes. What do you think about while you're lying awake? Oh, a world of different things. And tonight, were you perhaps thinking about school? Oh, no. All that seems very far away. Miles, you do know that you will not be allowed to go back. You realize that it is a very serious matter for a boy to be expelled from school? I can't think what your uncle will say. Can't you? I can. You say, don't bother me, I'm too busy. Miles, that's not true. Isn't it? You've met him, haven't you? You know what he's like. He doesn't care about me or Flora. He doesn't care what happens to us. Miles, dear, you mustn't believe that. Your uncle has... Well, he has a great many responsibilities and not enough time... To waste any on us. I understand. It's a bit sad, though, when people don't have time for you. Oh, I have, Miles. I have time. And I care. And, Miles, if there's something wrong about school, if there's something you want to tell me... Miles, dear Miles, can't you see that I want to help you? candle's gone out. Don't be frightened. It was only the wind, my dear. The wind blew it out.
long have you been here? I don't know. Twenty minutes, half an hour. Oh, then you must have seen him. Who? The man who was standing here on the tower. I've been quite alone, except for my greedy friends. Well, that can't be true. Not two minutes ago, I saw a man standing exactly here. Perhaps it was me. No, no, it was a man. He was looking at me. I expect you imagined it. Or else... Oh, dear. I hope you won't have to wear spectacles. You're much too pretty for that. Oh, yes, I expect I'm tired. I haven't been sleeping well. I know. Flora told me. She says you make little groans and moans all night. Of course, one can never believe Flora. She invents things. She imagines them. You mean like poor, silly Miss Giddens? <laughs> chance be yours. Scissors. The gardener brought them up. He said he found them in the garden. Oh, yes, I must have dropped them this morning when I... whilst I was cutting the roses. Oh, and just left them there. Oh, I'm afraid today isn't altogether my day. I seem to be at sixes and sevens. Well, miss, you've never been away from home before. A strange place, new responsibilities. Takes a bit of getting used Mrs. to... Mrs. Gross, is there anyone living here that I don't know about? Living here? In the house, I mean. I've met the two maids and the cook and her husband, the gardener, and I was just wondering if there was someone I hadn't met. Bless you, miss. I wish there were. We could use another pair of hands. Oh, Harry, do come. You must see. Mars is giving an expedition. Oh, come. You must see. He's awfully brave. was very clever, Miles. Do look, Miss Giddens. I can draw too. Miles isn't the only one who can draw. Oh, yes. Now I see. It's lovely. A vase of flowers. Goodness, no. It's a thunderstorm. See the clouds and the lightning? Oh, yes, dear. Yes, well, I'm sure it's very original. Perhaps you'll grow up to be a famous artist. Did you hear that, Mouse? Yes, dear. But Miss Giddens is merely being polite. Tell me, Miss Giddens, what do you think I might grow up to be? Anything you want. But there's nothing I want to be, except what I am, a boy living at Bly. Oh, if only everything could go on just as it is now. I love this house. Don't you, Miss Giddens? It's very beautiful and so large. I expect it's the biggest house in England. The whole world, actually. Oh, hardly the whole world, Flora. Your house, where you used to live, was that a big house, too? No, it was very small, I'm afraid. How small? Very, very small. Too small for you to have secrets? <laughs> well, secrets were a bit difficult. But possible. Not for long. Secrets require a privacy that our little home did not provide. Did you play games in your house? No, we had to be quiet usually because my father was preparing his sermon. But if he went out, we'd play hide-and-seek all over the house. Oh, lovely! Let's do that. All right. You hide, and I'll seek. We can go all over the house, can't we? Everywhere, I mean. Yes, I should think so. 
Where are the children going? It's their bedtime. Yes, I know. But I thought just one little game and then right to bed they'll go. Oh, they've won you over, Miss, already, I can see. <laughs> they have indeed. <laughs> I'm coming! <laughs> Anna? You'd oh. never have found me if I hadn't pounced on you. Oh. Did I frighten you? Yes, a bit. Now you're my prisoner. Oh, Miles, let me go. Why? You're hurting me. Am I? Yes, Miles, please let me go. But why? I told you, you're hurting me. Now, Miles, I mean it. Do you? Oh, you found it. I've missed it so. Mrs. Gross must have hidden it here. Now it's your turn to hide. Hurry, run! All right. Now, where? Oh, where shall I hide? Wherever you like. We'll count a hundred. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Whatever are you doing there, miss? Heavens, child, you're white as milk. I are saw you him. Ill? Don't tell me I didn't because I did. I saw him staring. Who, miss? The same man, the man on the tower. The tower? But now, just now, he was staring past me into the house as if he were hunting someone. Oh, what's he like, miss? Oh, he had dark, curling hair and the hardest, the coldest eyes. You see, would you say he was very handsome? Oh, yes, yes, handsome, handsome and obscene. But I've seen him before. Yes, he... I know where I've seen him. A picture. There's a picture of him. A miniature in a cracked glass in the attic. I'll show you. It can't be. It can't be. You know him. Quint. Peter Quint, the master's valet. But you said... Yes, miss, you see, he's dead. Quint is dead.
Your pencil does have the most terrible squeak, Flora. It does, doesn't it? But I can't help it, you know. Can't you? I thought you were doing it on purpose. She is. Stop it! Stop begging! I'm not begging! Yes, you are. You're begging for attention. <laughs> there you are, begging again. First for attention, now for affection. Stop it, Flora! Oh, Miles, hush, Miles. Oh, darling. Oh, poor darling, Flora. There, now, look, I've made you cry. Oh, what a hateful, what a grumpy old governess you have. You're not grumpy at all. Of course you're not. Though I wouldn't wonder if you were. No, would I when everything's so horrible? Horrible? Why, as you know, the rain. Not being able to go out in the garden. My squeaky pencil and me, I wasn't even trying to be good. Oh, but you are good. You both are. I know what. Let's put away our books and let's pretend it's Flora's birthday. Oh, yes. All right, Flora, it's your birthday. Now, what would you like to do? Have a party. A costume party. Mm. That's a splendid idea. Mark and I'll go and get all dressed up. Oh. May we? Yes, of course you may. Come along then, Flora. Oh, good. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Where are you going? To dress up. You said we might. Well, I'll come with you. No, then there'd be no surprise. You wait downstairs. We won't be long. Hurry, 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 hurry. I've let them go. Go where, miss? Oh. Oh, I've let the children go. Upstairs. To the attic, perhaps. Alone. Oh, is that all? They'll come to no harm. I can't. I can't leave them alone. Not after the other night. Oh, as for the other night, Miss, put it out of your mind. Pretend it was part of a dream, which perhaps it was. A dream? Oh, don't you think I want to believe that? That it was just the darkness? A nightmare? That it's no longer dark, it's daylight, and I know I saw him. A man, or something that once was a man, peering in through the window, looking for someone. And if it isn't true, if I didn't see him, how could I have described him so accurately? Well, you had seen his picture. Really, miss, you're upsetting yourself over nothing. You said he was the valet? Yes, but when the master left, Quint was alone with us in charge. Tell me, how did he die? Quint? Out there, miss, on those very steps. It was winter. The coldest, blackest winter's night. The steps were icy, and Quint, he came home late after we were all abed, late and full of drink. There was a wound on his head as if he'd slipped, as if he'd fallen out there in the dark. I can't forget his eyes. They were open, filled with surprise, with pain, like the eyes of a fox I once saw, a fox the dogs had hunted down. But it was an accident. He was a peculiar man. There were things in his life that could account for violence done him. Vicious things. Oh, well, it, it doesn't do to speak ill of the dead. The children never mention him. Oh, no, miss. And neither must you. Not to them. You see, miss, it was Master Miles that found him. Oh, that poor little boy. If you could have heard his screams, seen the way he clung to him and begged him to speak, that poor little boy worshipped Quint. Worshipped him? That man, Miles? You didn't know Quint, miss. Such power he had over people. You can't blame the child. A lonely boy with no father, Quint took advantage, that's all. It made me sick to see Miles trotting after him like a little dog. They were always together. Quiet, everyone. The entertainment is about to commence. Oh, look, miss. I borrowed your pincushion. I hope you don't mind. Miss Giddens, dear, would you sit there? And Mrs. Gross, would you sit there too? And now, Miles will recite to you. A poem. What shall I sing to my lord from my window? What shall I sing for my lord will not stay? What shall I sing, for my lord will not listen? Where shall I go, for my lord is away? 
Whom shall I love when the moon is arisen? Gone is my lord, and the grave is his prison. What shall I say when my lord comes a-calling? What shall I say when he knocks on my door? What shall I say when his feet enter softly, leaving the marks of his grave on my floor? Enter, my lord. Come from your prison. Come from your grave. For the moon is arisen. Welcome, my lord. Look at that. What, miss? I was afraid for them. But what if he knows? What if Miles knows? Knows what, Miss Giddens, dear? You think I'm imagining it. And yet, just now, you yourself saw and heard Miles... Playing a game. You told me Quint and Miles were always together. But Master Miles wasn't to blame for that. Yes, but couldn't you have stopped it? I wasn't in charge, Miss. It wasn't for me to question the Master's arrangements. The Master put Quint in charge here. Besides, no one could go against Quint. You were afraid of him? But what of Miss Jessel? Couldn't she have done something, or was she afraid of him, too? Not at first. At least, in the beginning, when she first came here, she was always happy and smiling. Very fond of music, she was, and dancing. She and Miss Flora used to dance together, dance by the hour. But she changed. Oh, yes, she changed. It was hard to believe her being an educated young lady and Quint being... Well, what he was. There, you see, I knew they'd be overexcited. It's long past their bedtime. Yes, but what did you mean about Quint and Miss Jessel? Look, miss, they're dead, gone. There's no point in telling tales of what's over and done with. Over and done with? Yes, but is it? older, but it's too heavy for you now. I don't care. I've got a boat of my own anyway. Oh. Heavenly warm sun. It's almost hot. I like it when it's hot. Do you know what Mars told me once? No, dear, what? He said that once, when he was on the lake, he could see a hand waving on the bottom. But Mrs. Gross said, stuff for nonsense, stuff Nonsense. Miss Giddens, can daughters swim? No, dear. I thought perhaps they couldn't. Flora, where did you learn that song? I don't think I remember. It's the song from the music box, isn't it? Isn't it? Who is it? Over. 
goodness, miss, you gave me quite a turn sitting there in the dark. And where are the children? Upstairs with Anna. I wanted to be by myself for a while. To think. Well, miss, I'm sure a little light will make your thoughts more cheerful. Mrs. Gross, there are two of them. I beg your pardon? Two of those abominations. Today, down by the lake, there in the broad sunlight, I saw the other one. The other one? A woman dressed in black. Miss Jessel. But Miss Jessel's dead. She died, why, almost a year ago. <laughs> almost a year ago. Almost a year. Flora saw her, too. Did she tell you so? No, of course not. She lied to me. Well, it amounted to a lie. Oh, now, miss, I've never known either of the children to tell lies. Or why would they? Why? Because they are both playing or being made to play some monstrous game. I can't pretend to understand what its purpose is. I only know that it is happening. Something secretive and whispery and indecent. I tell you, believe me, the children are in dreadful peril. Well, what are we to do? Then you do believe me. You don't think I'm imagining it. I believe you, miss. Oh, thank God, thank God. I've been so frightened. I felt so alone. But together, with you to help me... Oh, yes, miss, I'll help you. Only tell me how. Yes. We must try to learn what it is these horrors want. Think, Mrs. Gross. The answer must lie in the past. Were Quint and Miss Jessel in love? They were in love, weren't they? Love? Oh, I suppose that's what she called it, but it, it was more like a sickness, a, a fever that leaves the body burned out and dry. There was no cruelty she wouldn't suffer. If he struck her, oh yes, and I've seen him knock her to the floor, she'd look at him as though she wanted the weight of his hand. No pride, no shame. Crawl to him on her hands and knees, she would, and him laughing at her. Such a savage laugh he had. Oh, it hurts me to remember. Bad she was, but no woman could have suffered more. A person ought to keep quiet about it. You must tell me. Oh, miss, there's things I've seen I, I'm ashamed to say. Go on. Rooms. Used by daylight uh, as though they were dark woods. They didn't care that you saw them? And the children? I can't say, miss. I I don't know what the children saw, but they used to follow Quint and Miss Jessel, trailing along behind, hand in hand, whispering. There was too much whispering in this house, Miss. Oh, yes, I can imagine. Yes, I can imagine what sort of things they whispered about. Quint, Miles, I can hear them together. But there was nothing wrong in Master Miles wanting to be with Quint. Quint taught him to ride and took him walking. The poor lad needed someone to, to... corrupt him. But Master Miles is a good boy, miss. There's nothing wicked in him. Unless he's deceiving us. Unless they're both deceiving us. The innocents. Innocents they are, miss. It's not fair. You have no right to accuse them of... Oh, forgive me, Mrs. Gross. I'm not accusing. I'm just trying to put it together. To understand. Tell me. Were the children happy? Well, they seem to be the same as now, but... But sometimes I used to wonder if they really cared for them, those two, or if they weren't just using them. Using them? Yes, of course they were, and still are. And in the end, what happened to her, Miss Jessel? Oh, that was pitiful. 
When Quint was found, she went into blackest mourning. Her that should have hated the man. She grieved till there was something crazy in her eyes. Never slept, never ate. I used to hear her wandering about all over the house, sobbing. Couldn't go on. Finally, she died. Here? At Bly? But of what did she die? I suppose you might say a broken heart. Excuse me, miss. They're in bed now, all scrubbed and nice and waiting for you to hear their prayers. Thank you, Anna. I shall be up in a moment. One thing more before I go. Yes, miss. Our local vicar, what sort of man is he? The Reverend Fennell. Oh, he's a very fine sort of gentleman, miss. Oh, but, miss, I wouldn't do that. I, I mean, if you were thinking of discussing with the vicar what we have been discussing, oh, oh I wouldn't, miss. Why not? Well, it, it, it might cause talk, a, a scandal. Oh, haven't we worse to fear than a scandal? But what good would it do, miss, telling the vicar our secrets? He can't help us. He's perhaps the only one who can. <laughs> but what good would it do, miss, telling the vicar our secrets? He can't help us. Only remember, you are in supreme authority. Shh, Laura, it's a secret. You must remember it's a secret. I've made up my mind. Right after church, I shall take the next train to London and see their uncle. He must have returned. But why, miss? Why now? Because I... We can go on no longer without help. I know you're almost sick with worry, but except for odd times, you can't say the children haven't been good. But they haven't been good. Merely easy to live with, because they are not living with us. We have no part in their real life. Dear Mrs. Gross, I know it's hard for you to think wrong of those children. But there are things that I haven't told you, that I can't bring myself to tell even you. Look at them. What do you think they're saying? Well, I don't know, miss. Just children's talk. They're talking about them. Talking horrors. So far, these monsters have kept their distance. Only been seen in high places, through windows, across the lake. But they intend coming closer. And if they do, what will you say to them, Master? Well, what can I say? That his house is being poisoned? That the children are a pair of calculating liars? That they have friends who would frighten them out of their lives if they weren't deeply and forever bound to them? Oh, yes, I know. He'll think I'm insane or that it's some stupid trick to get him to notice me. Oh, I wish there was something I could do to help. There is. Have you told me? If I am to convince their uncle, I must have the truth. All the truth. How did Miss Jessel die? Please, Miss, we'll be late. How did she die? In wickedness. She put an end to herself. She was found in the lake. Drowned. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss. I, I should never have told you. I'm glad you did. Oh, go in, Mrs. Gross. I'll follow you in a moment.
I do wish you wouldn't go, miss. It seems wrong somehow you're hurrying off like this. I'm left with no choice. Thank you, Mrs. Gross. There's nothing else to be done except to go to their uncle, tell him everything, force him to understand. Did you order the carriage for me? I did, miss. I'll go and see if it's come round. Now get someone to take your luggage down. Thank you. I shall be in the schoolroom. Miss Giddens? Miss Giddens? Are you ready, Miss? I'm not going. Everything has changed. Are you ill? Where are the children? Anna's giving them their milk. Carriage is ready, miss. From now on, we must never let them out of our sight. We can't take the slightest chance. Of what? She was here. She was waiting for me. Who? She spoke. She spoke? It came to that. Oh, I could feel pity for her. If she herself were not so pitiless and hungry, hungry for him, for his arms and his lips. But she can only reach him. They can only reach each other by entering the souls of the children and possessing them. The children are possessed. They live and know and share this hell. Then surely you must tell the master. I can't leave them now. I shall write to him and insist upon his coming down here. But even if he chooses to ignore me, with or without his help, I think I know how we can save them. Yes, miss. They must be made to admit what is happening. One word, one word of the truth from these children, and we can cast out those devils forever. Oh, I pray to God you're right, miss.
get his eyes. They were open. What shall I say when he speaks? Enter softly, leaving the mark to the grave. <laughs> You're hurting me. up the tower, you saw something. Of course what I did. What did you see? Only you, Miss Gidden. I was waiting for you. Waiting? Oh, I knew you'd look out. But don't you want to know why? I'll tell you the real, true reason. But I wonder if you'll understand. I'll try. Well, put me back to bed then, if you're not too cross. Are you cross? Yes, I am. I thought you would be. Come on, I'll tell you when I'm in bed. 
Well, now. Yes? I wanted you to think me bad for a change. For a change? Well, I thought I might be becoming a bore. Miles, tell me the truth. But I am. I mean, good children do get a bit boring, don't they? So I thought, why not go out tonight and wander about in my bare feet? Which was a shocking thing to do, wasn't it? Yes, very shocking. Well, that was our plan. Flora and I arranged it together. But we giggled, so I was sure you must have heard us. Yes, I... I did hear something. I told her to go over to the window. Then you'd be bound to look out and see me. Flora's been bad as well. Miles, what are you hiding under your pillow? I'm not hiding it. I'm keeping it warm. I found it this morning. One of my pigeons. I couldn't, could I, leave it out there alone? But, Miles, its neck. It looks as if someone had broken it. Yes, poor thing. I'll bury it tomorrow. Kiss me good night, Miss Giddens. No, Miles, to your uncle. I knew you would, finally. Did you? I suppose you're telling him what a wicked boy I've been. It concerns you in part, yes. Well, do be sure and give him my love. Miles, isn't that the tune that Flora's always singing? Do you like it? Oh, yes, it was very clever. Quick, we must find her. Where? By the lake, where we picnic, where we saw Miss Jessel. You see, she's taken the boat. All alone, that child? She's not alone. And at such time, she's not a child. She's an old, old woman. you think it was? Why, Miss Giddens, you came out without your hat. So did you. How did you get here, dear? In the boat. Miss, Miss Giddens. And when did you learn to row, Laura? Miles taught me. Why did you come here? I always come here when I want to dance, when I want to be alone. And who gave you that music box? I don't think I remember. Miss 
Gibbons. Oh, yes, I do. It was Mrs. Gross. No, it was not. Wasn't it, Miss Gibbons, dear? And where, my pet, is Miss Jessel? Where is she, Flora? Miss Gibbons. Where is she? You know you can see her. Miss. Look, Flora, look. There. You know you can see her. I can't, I can't. Admit it. She's there. You know you can see her. I can't, I can't. But look, she's there. I like it when the fire does that, don't you? Never known equal, never. It's beyond nature. Now do you believe me? Now that you've seen, now that I've heard, in all my years, and I've known a vile tongue or two in my time, never have I heard of such obscenities. That pleases you? No, of course not. But it justifies me. It's proof. Perhaps it is, but to hear such filth from a child's mouth, I don't know where she could have learned such language. I know. I've never heard her speak like it before, never, until you came. You saw who taught her. You saw that woman. I know what I saw. Has she mentioned it? Mentioned Miss Jessel? Only to say there was no one there. Yes, and you pretended to believe her. I didn't have to pretend. Well, how can you say that? As though you... You two were a complete innocent. You lived here. You knew those two. You knew them when they were alive, and you knew what sort of influence they were on the children, and it frightened you. When I came here, you were still frightened. Oh, you were. I sensed it. And why? Because you felt they weren't really dead. And now, despite all that, you turn on me. You blame me. But all I want to do is save the children, not destroy them. Don't you know that? All I know is Miss Flora was a sweet, innocent child, a happy child, until you made her face that... That woman, say it! That bad memory. It may have been the saving of her. But you must take her to her uncle. You must both go away tomorrow. 
Away from me, away from them, the servants, everyone must go. And leave you here all alone. Except for Miles. We were together this afternoon, sitting in front of the fire. He didn't say anything, but he wanted to. It was like a pendulum, and I could feel it swinging my way, slowly, slowly. Oh, yes, he wanted to reveal himself and ask for my help. And we must give him that chance. Don't you understand that? After today, miss, I doubt I shall ever understand you. It was a cruel thing, and if you're planning another cruelty... But to wake a child out of a bad dream, is that a cruelty? If you were my age and had cared for as many children as I have, you'd know that waking a child can sometimes be worse than any bad dream. No. It's the shock, and then being suddenly deprived. No, no, you're wrong. You're talking nonsense. As you say, miss. You and Flora will leave tomorrow. It is my decision. I shall send the servants away. He put me in charge, in sole charge, Mrs. Gross. Tomorrow I must be alone here, with Miles. Miss, may I ask what I am to tell their uncle? The truth. The truth. Yes, miss. Thank you. Mrs. Gross, have you got my letter? What letter, miss? To their uncle. I left it on the desk. Well, I haven't touched it, miss. Well, I wonder who... Oh, of course. Miles. You're accusing him of stealing. Well, what matter? It's just one thing more for us to talk about when we're alone. Where is Master Miles? Well, he went out early this morning. But I shall wait for him. He'll come to me. Well, I... I suppose Miss Flora and I had best be on our way. Give her my love when she's better. And Mrs. Gross, please, wait till you see Miles again before you judge me. I can't judge you, Miss. A body can only judge themselves. May God be with you, Miss.
So here you are. I say, are we having tea in here? Yes, Miles. How very grand and grown up. Yes. And we can talk together now, like adults. Jolly nice, I call it. I feel quite the master of the house. Where are the servants? They've gone home. Oh, did you send them? Or did they take fright and run away? What do you mean? Well, you're afraid. And perhaps you made them so. And of what? Assuming you are right. Of what am I afraid, Miles? I'm not a mind reader, my dear. I've told you that before. But I do sense things. Don't worry, there's a man in the house. Is there? Yes, me. I'll protect you. <laughs> I say, it is fun. We've got the whole house to ourselves. More or less. There are still the others. Poor Flora. Is she awfully ill? I mean, is it serious? Has she gone to hospital? No, just to London. I think Bly didn't agree with her anymore. This house upset her. Suddenly? Oh, no, I had seen it coming on. Did you? Then why didn't I? I love Flora, and I know what she feels before she feels it herself. She loved this house. She was as happy here... as happy as I am. Are you? What? So very happy. Are you, Miles? If you'll excuse me. Miles, you haven't... Poor Flora. She must have been upset to have forgotten Rupert. Why did you want to be alone with me? I think you know very well. What do I know? Or rather, what is it that you want to know? Well, for one thing, why that night when you were supposed to be in bed, why were you in the garden? I told you. The real reason, Miles. It's beyond me why you go on asking a fellow questions when every time he answers you, you tell him it isn't true. Because you are not telling the truth. Don't shout. Don't be so angry. It does something to your face. It makes you look ugly and cruel. Miles. Miles, listen to me. I'm not a cruel person. I'm sometimes very foolish and I make mistakes, but I'm not cruel. My father taught me to love people and help them. Help them even if they refuse my help, even if it hurt them sometimes. And that's the only reason I'm here, is to help you. Whatever you've done, I'm not against you. I don't think it's your fault. I haven't done anything. Then why were you sent home from school? It must be. Because I'm different. But you aren't. You're like any other boy. Ah, now who isn't telling the truth? If you really thought that, we wouldn't be having these conversations. No, my dear, you don't think I'm like any other boy. That's why you're afraid. If I am, it's for you. And I am afraid for you, Miles. If you don't tell me now... There's nothing. Isn't there? Why did you take my letter? You did take it, didn't you? Yes, I took it. Why? To see what you said about us. Us? Well, about me. And what did you discover? You thanked my uncle for trusting you. You apologized for troubling him, for asking him to come down. Go on, Miles. What else did I say? That's all I read. I heard footsteps. I threw it on the fire. And did you take other things? 
Is that what you did at school? No, I'm not a thief. Then what did you do, Miles? I, I said things. Yes, Miles. Sometimes I heard things. And sometimes at night, when everything was dark. The masters heard about it. They said, I frightened the other boys. And when did you first see and hear of such things? Why, I, I made them up. Who taught them to you? Told you. They just came into my head. What were they? Shall I tell you who taught them to you? I won't ever again, I promise. Shall I tell you who taught you? The things you've done, the things you've said? Shall I tell you his name? You don't fool me. I know why you keep on and on. <sighs> it's because you're afraid. You're afraid you might be mad. So you keep on and on. Trying to make me admit something that isn't true. Trying to frighten me the way you frightened Flora. Mom, but I'm not Flora. Please. I'm no baby. You think you can run to my uncle with a lot of lies. But he won't believe you. Not when I tell him what you are. A damn hussy. A damn dirty-minded hag. You never fooled us. We always knew. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't you. That voice, those words, they weren't yours. Forgive me. Oh, Miles, dear Miles, say it now, now while I'm holding you. Say his name and it will all be over. Who? The man who taught you. The man you've been meeting, that you've never stopped meeting. You're wrong! You're insane! You're insane! His name, Miles! You are insane! You're insane! His name, Miles! Tell me his name! You must tell me his name! He's dead! Look! No! Look! Look! No! He's here! What a lie! He's gone, Miles. You are safe. You are free. I have you. He's lost you forever. Miles. 